guys sorry for the kind of weird lighting i just got back from my larp and i wanted to film it while it was fresh in my mind so it's about um like 8 p.m so we got some kind of weird lighting it's summer so there's still light coming in from the window but it's not light enough to actually not have you know electric lights on anyway let's talk about larp so for those of you who don't know larp stands for live action role playing and it is considered to be nerdy which i mean Maybe it is, but I don't really care, to be honest. Um, so yeah, basically, there are different types of LARPs, and honestly, I'll probably make another video explaining all that, because I don't really know it myself. I know there are buffer LARPs, which are when you use fake weapons, uh, parlor LARPs, which are when you, I think it's when you have assigned roles and you do it more like in your house, that sort of thing. Uh, there's Nordic style LARP, which I know is the one we played today, but I don't know what differentiates that from other ones. So yeah, I'm not going to pretend I'm an expert at this. Uh, basically, I was uh, sick in bed for the past few weeks and I got a Momo Ryan video recommended to me and she is amazing. So I started watching it and I was like, this LARP thing looks pretty cool. I think I want to do it. So then I moved on to see LARP House and LARP Girl and Raquel Skellington. And I was like, these are all really cool. I really want to do this. So I started researching for LARPs here in Minnesota and I found some and lucky me, it's free or it's like pay what you can, you know? So some of these LARPs that I've seen are like super fancy and they look amazing, but they're like hundreds and hundreds of dollars and I can't afford that. So this one was really chill. Uh, funnily enough, the group that does it is also called LARP House. So it, I'm not talking about the LARP House that uh, Cheyenne runs. If you know that channel, it's a great channel. Check it out. I am talking about Minnesota's LARP house. So just so there's no confusion there. I wish I had been to a LARP uh, with the other LARP house, but I have not. Basically, this game was super chill and I was kind of excited because it was a one session game and it was a Dungeons and Dragons style. And if you've seen my other videos, you might know that I play Dungeons and Dragons. So I have a very good uh, handle on the game, how the game works, that sort of thing. So I was like, okay, this is a good role play to get my like toes into because it's not a new story. It's, it's doing a scenario that I'm quite familiar with. Interestingly though, they didn't actually have us make our own characters uh, and you didn't have to come in costume. They said, bring any props that you might have, but there's no pressure. Some LARPs have like very big costumes you can do and they look amazing, but this was just like, wear whatever you want, bring props if you have them, it's all fine, you know? So I convinced Laura to come with me cause well, originally, so I had told her about it and I said like, do you want to come? And she said, yes, but she forgot to sign up. So then I was like, okay, I'm going to go on my own, whatever. It's, it's fine. I'm a little nervous, but it's fine. And then yesterday a ticket opened up. So I was like, Laura, let's go. And she got it. So she did get to come with me. I want to thank all the members for being so opening. No, sorry. So open and like helpful. I don't know why I said opening. Um, I was nervous because like I didn't know anyone, but it ended up really nice. So I had needed a ride and one of the lovely members gave me a ride. Um, so that was really nice and gave Laura a ride as well. So we got to the, the location, which was a room in a nonprofit, and we just got to hang out for a bit. And then we started doing some workshopping for our characters. So we were each first given a characteristic um, that was like your character's main personality trait. So mine, ironically enough, was whining. So it said, you're always having like aches and pains and you complain about them constantly annoying the party. Oh, I should note, if you don't know what Dungeons and Dragons is, um, it's a very complex game, but this scenario was just, you're a group of adventurers and each one of you is like a role from D&D, which I will explain in a second. And you're going to go into a dungeon to do a dungeon crawl. So you go through a dungeon to try and find treasure basically. So yes, and the party is your adventuring party, your group. So, why is this ironic, you might ask, the whining? Because I, as someone who is chronically ill, um, basically do my absolute best to never complain or be annoying to people because I don't want them to think that I am a burden and then not want to hang out with me because I'm sick. So having my character's main personality trait be that was kind of like, ugh. So then we started doing some exercises to get into that sort of personality. So it was all silent, but it was like the way you walked, the way you moved, or in my case, you know, rolled. How would that look? So I did a lot of like cracking my neck and sighing and like touching different parts of my body and being like, Ugh. which was fun. Then we got a different card with our character's name on it and brief description. So my character was called Petunia and she was an elf 
uh, from the forest. So she was basically a druid. So it was like, you are, you know, nature's child. You float along like you're a river or something like that. I don't know. The other characters were a rogue, a barbarian, a fighter, a bard, a wizard. There was a dwarf, but I don't recall what his um, role was. And then a cleric. And here's a Sarge. So we each got that. And at this point we get costumes and these people brought it. So I had brought my two Harry Potter ones and these people, they had like homemade plate like armor and weapons. It was amazing. So I looked like this or like this. I don't know where the picture, I'm putting a picture in. Uh, but yeah, so I had elf ears. I had a little flower crown, I had kind of a drapey scarf thing, and then I had a long green cloak, and I had my Luna Lovegood wand, which had a flower on it. Funnily enough, I couldn't wheel while holding the wand, and I was wearing high tops, so I just kind of shoved the wand inside my high tops, and that's how I used it when I moved around. So I had that. Then, once we had gotten into costume, we um, did a thing where we got to like walk around in character again, you know, getting into character, and then we got to meet everyone in the party. So we got, we stood in a circle and we got to introduce ourselves, but we would each be given a card by the game master and that would be our relationship to the person to the left of us. So for example, to the right of me was the cleric and his card said that he was in a secret society with me and that one of us was the leader. So we did a little thing about that. Um, and then my card said the person to the left of me, which was Laura, and I had like a rivalry. So whatever the, they did, I could do 50 times better. So I felt really bad about this because the whole game, I was needling Laura about her magic or Laura's character. So she'd try to do a spell and I'd be like, no, you should pick me, I'm so much better. And at the same time, I was this like hippie flower child, but also someone who complained a lot. So I'd be like, I don't mean to complain, but there aren't enough flowers here. And you know, my back really hurts, but I can do magic so well. It was weird. It was funny, but it was weird. So then we just kind of went about um, talking to each other for a bit. Then we did like a visualization exercise to be going into the dungeon. Oh no, first we did like practices in the dungeon. So the game master would say, okay, you three come up here. So you're facing a fork in the road. How do you, what do you do? So what marching order do you want to be in? What kind of things do you do? And then we could critique them. Then we did the visualization. And that, one of my weird triggers is like, that so visualization like close your eyes and listen to me talk sort of thing so i was freaking out a little bit there but i didn't show it i could have this larp was very much a safe place the door was always open if you wanted to leave you could just leave if you wanted to come back in you could if you weren't okay you could like tell someone you could be like hey cut cut stop or you could say you know back off slow down but i was like megs you can handle this he's just talking it's fine so he kind of took us through what it was like to be in the dungeon and then the third part was us coming out of the dungeon and us being in a therapy group. So to like debrief about being in the dungeon. So each of us got a piece of treasure, treasure I say, mine was a used handkerchief, woo. Um, and then we kind of had to debate about that. And also a, a member of our party, a paladin who was played by the game master had been killed. And that was really interesting. So we could kind of roll with all that. And basically the rogue who was called Backstabian took it upon themselves to be the killer but like their main character trait was that they were a faker so they'd be like oh yeah i've been in 40 million larps uh 40 million dungeon crawls before i'm i'm so good uh but but i'm really trustworthy yeah i i would never you know stab anyone's back or anything which was funny so their whole thing was like they had killed the paladin but they didn't want anyone to know and then we fought over the treasure so we had a monk who was really greedy um, and then they, one of the treasures was like pine needles and pine cones. So I was like, I want that, you know, druid. Um, then there was a magical jewel. And at one point the game master was like, that jewel could be mind control. And so Laura and I, as the two magic users were like, Hey, give it to us. We'll figure out if it's a mind control, uh, if it has mind control powers. And then once they gave it to us, I looked at Laura and said, look in your wizard book. Cause that was her treasure and see how to use it. And then once she did, I was like, okay, we're gonna use it on this circle to force you all to tell the truth about who killed the paladin. And so it was kind of like casting zone of truth. So we did that and we got some pretty funny things. Like the bard was like, I'm an addict, I'm addicted to mushrooms or something. And then of course, Backstabian was like, I killed the paladin. 
uh, what else happened? Oh yes, there was one guy who's, who, whose arm had been cut off and he was slowly dying of gangrene and one of the treasures was a healing potion, but the whole time the game master was like, no, you have to, you have to agree on who gets what treasure. So at one point I look over and his arm is just gone. He like hit it up his shirt, obviously, but he's like, yeah, my arm fell off, which is pretty great. And the other funny moment was the cleric, his character trait was an idiot basically. So he had this mace and he would like roll it on the ground instead of, you know, using it. But then he also didn't know the name of his god. So he'd be like, so who do you pray to? And he's like, mm -hmm. and then at one point he was like, yeah. And so somebody was like, oh, you pray to the god of yeah, the god yeah. And he's like, yeah. So every time someone would ask him a question after that, he'd just be like, yeah, yeah. And then he and the bard got into a fight because his one job was to heal. Obviously, that's what a cleric does. Um, so we were like, just just heal the dude with the gangrene because I, of course, was going, I need the healing potion. I hurt so much, you know. I don't know how to explain it. It was just funny. And then once the game ended, we, you know, came out of character. We took some pictures. Um, and then we all went to a restaurant, like a diner, to get food. And it was just really fun to get to know people as you know, themselves and not whatever character they were being. I really enjoyed it. I really, really did. I had a great time. I definitely want to do it in the future. Uh, the nice thing about this LARP was that they, the LARP house in particular is very um, committed to being accessible and a safe place and all that. So there were no problems with me being in a wheelchair. I do feel bad sometimes because I want to do like the really high tech, high quality LARPs that are in castles and stuff, but like castles aren't going to be accessible for me, you know? So it's nice to dream about. But yeah, overall, I had a great time. I would definitely recommend LARPing. I think it's fun. Like, I don't know, it's 2019. We can kind of throw like the cringe culture idea out. Like who cares if you think it's weird, just do it. It's fun, you know, same with D&D. &D. Just, just be someone else and have fun. It's like playing make-believe again, just go for it. So yeah, I am definitely looking forward to doing LARP stuff in the future. Let me know if you want to hear more videos about LARP. I will probably make some more. But if you have any particular questions, let me know in the comments down below. And until then, I hope you have a great day, week, evening, any period of time, whatever. And I will see you next time. Bye.